Long story short, I started a new project. It all began with Ludum Dare, a game jam where you only have 48 hours to complete your game, which took place this January. For some reason, I really wanted to make a small game about building roads on a map with hexagonal tiles. Unfortunately, the road placing algorithm turned out to be way more complicated than I initially thought, so I ended up spending the whole first day of the jam working on it. After I finished with this algorithm and had a good night's sleep, I was left with something like 12 hours and I decided to turn the game into a puzzle, because I feel like this is the only mechanic you can reliably implement in such a short time period. The idea was that the player should build roads in a pretty specific order, otherwise they lose their money and have to restart the level. The game was received ok, but I couldn't shake the idea that it should have been something else. You know, with real cars moving on these roads, maybe colliding with each other forming traffic jams and so on. Something like a traffic simulator. Now, should I start a new project when I already have another one that I've been working on for months, which I in turn started when I had another project which I've been working on for... <sighs> You see, for the last year or so I've been trying to make a game, a bigger game, something I could finish, release and eventually be proud of. And having no experience in such things, I struggled a lot. I kept adding new features to these projects without a clear vision of where they're going. I kept thinking my core mechanics are completely broken, not realizing that I simply need to put some extra work into making them better. Everyone says to start with small games, and well, I've already made a dozen small games on various game jams. And here's the thing. Once you step into the territory of projects bigger than a week-long game jam, it's extremely hard to know what small actually means. So this time I've set myself an objective to release the game this year. Actually, I've already almost decided on the release date, which will be in October 2023. As usual, I'm making everything in my own C++ game engine, simply because it's so much fun. If you want to support this game, wishlist it on Steam, this will help me a lot. The link is in the video description. So what is this game? Here is the core concept. You have a procedural map with hexagonal tiles, there is a city growing on this map, and you need to build roads for the city. That's it. Think city skylines meets mini motorways, something like that. Part of the game is managing your wallet. You spend money on building roads and you get rewards for building a road to a specific destination. Another part of the game is building efficient roads, making sure that your whole city doesn't collapse into a single enormous traffic jam. I started by taking the road building mechanic and car movement code from the jam game. Here the cars are just moving randomly, changing their path on each intersection. As you can see, you can't build roads with a 120 degree turn. It would increase the number of possible road tiles significantly, and it really makes the player put much more thought into planning the roads. Of course, cars don't just move through each other in reality, so the next thing I implemented was physical collision between the cars. I've also added some code so that the cars would gently stop and move back a little if there is a car in front of them. Unfortunately, this created something that I call a deadlock, several cars blocking each other's movement in such a way that no car can actually move. To fix that, I added traffic lights that you can put on any road intersection. They solve the deadlock issue in most cases, but they also significantly reduce the road's throughput, meaning on average fewer cars can move through the road per unit of time. By the way, it isn't completely obvious how traffic lights should work on hexagonal tiles. I ended up making a system where each traffic light can have a different number of states depending on the underlying road's geometry, and hard-coded these states for each type of a road. I also randomized the colors of the cars to make it look a bit more interesting and joyful. So we have roads and cars, but we don't have a city yet, so I modeled this simple house and office models in Blender. The idea is that cars spawn in houses and move to offices, and vice versa, as if there were some people moving from home to work and back. I figured it would be useful for the player to visually identify traffic jams, so I added support for visualizing each road's load factor. At this point I suddenly realized that I can reuse this data to add some sort of automatic load balancing. I made the cars use a less loaded path whenever they can. From the very beginning I was planning to add some sort of roundabouts, but I wanted something more generic than just a roundabout tile. Instead, I added one-way roads, indicated by these direction arrows. Right now there is only one way to connect a one-way road to a normal one, I think there will be more options in the future. To make the cars use both lanes of a one-way road, and at the same time to minimize the amount of lane switching, I used a really simple trick. Each car randomly selects one of the two lanes whenever it enters a one-way road. 
All this is just a simulation for now, so it's time to make it into a game. The first idea I had is that the player will receive one score point each time a car reaches its destination. Once the player reaches a certain target score, a new task is spawned to build a road to a specific tile, giving money to the player upon completion. I also got sick of looking at the houses and added some textures for the walls, roofs and sidewalks. After testing the score mechanic for a while, I realized that the player can brute force it by simply waiting long enough. And as we all know, given the opportunity, players will always optimize the fun out of the game, so I started thinking about a different way to compute the player's score. What I came up with is measuring the average number of successful car trips per second. Unfortunately, it doesn't work well either. The player can try to artificially create a traffic jam and then make it disappear so that a large number of cars reach their destinations almost simultaneously. Overall, this new mechanic felt less intuitive and more random, so I wasn't happy with it at all. On the bright side, I figured a stupidly simple way to fix the deadlocks and guarantee that all traffic jams will eventually dissolve. I build a graph where cars are the vertices and there is an edge from one car to another if this car prevents the other car from moving. Then I simply find cycles in this graph and allow all the cars in this cycle to go bananas, meaning they all can move ignoring other cars. This looks hilarious and also solves the problem, so I'm really happy with it. I was trying to come up with building placement patterns depending on the road type so that the buildings would nicely cover all the available space, but this proved to be really hard. Instead, I simply spawned the buildings randomly, orienting them towards the closest road and making sure that they don't intersect with other buildings. Then I decided to work a little more on the visuals. I made a grass texture by spawning a lot of grass blades in Blender and rendering them into a texture. I also implemented basic shadow mapping and a day-night cycle. I'm always amazed by how much shadows improve the visual appearance of a scene. Then I tried yet another player score mechanic. This time I'm computing the number of cars that successfully reached their destinations during a single day, multiplied by a factor computed from the average car speed, which is designed to penalize the player for traffic jams. This mechanic feels a bit artificial, but it works better than my previous attempts, so that's something. Now, I was always thinking of making the game be truly three-dimensional, with a 3D terrain instead of the flat map which it is right now. There were several problems with this idea, though. One of them is that I'd probably have to support roads with arbitrary slope angles, which just feels weird and wrong. Luckily, I found this guy called Johnny Corpy on Mastodon who makes an amazing-looking RPG and he also has hexagonal terrain with arbitrary elevations. Browsing through his screenshots, I found that he simply creates impassable cliffs between tiles if they have too much of a height difference, and I realized that this will solve all my problems. I've spent several days on implementing and tweaking the 3D terrain generation algorithm. It takes the height at the center of each tile, computes the slope for each tile, computes the location of cliffs and generates the final smooth terrain. The algorithm takes about 500 lines of code and by this time I barely understand how it works, but it works. This is how the generated terrain looks. Honestly, I'm extremely happy with how it turned out. It is exactly what I was hoping for. And this is how the actual mesh looks. As you can see, it has more vertices closer to the tile edges. The second problem with 3D terrain was how to actually render roads on top of it. My roads are just flat polygonal models and I cannot simply recompute the position of each vertex according to the terrain height. This would be too computationally expensive to render and there still would be some annoying issues with the road polygons intersecting the terrain. Instead, I decided to render the roads as decals, meaning I will project the image of the road on top of the existing terrain geometry. Supporting a large number of decals is pretty similar to supporting a large number of lights, so I had to switch to deferred rendering in my engine. Deferred rendering is a very common technique where you first render some information to a set of screen-sized buffers and then combine that information together to form the final image. The actual roads are rendered using proxy geometry, in this case it is simply a hexagonal prism. Then I added two more terrain types, sand and the forest. There is also a nice tree falling animation when you build a road through the forest. Honestly, I really like how the game starts to look. I think I'm heading in the right direction. I also realized that I can now add as many light sources as I want, so I made each car emit its own light.
Then I implemented Skyray Martian using the Nishita model similar to the default dynamic sky in Unity. The sky is pre-computed each frame into a small texture, which is then used to actually render the sky onto the screen. I felt like office buildings need to look more like if they were made from glass, so I also implemented screen space reflections. This technique has a lot of limitations, but it works fine in my case. For some reason I'm a little bit obsessed with islands and procedural generation, so naturally I spent some time working on a procedural island map for the game. And yeah, I also added water around the island, which also uses screen space reflections. I think it looks really neat. Here is a normal texture that I use for the surface waves. Enough for visual improvements. I've procrastinated for too long, time to work on the actual gameplay. First, I figured that such a peaceful looking game absolutely needs some farms, so I added those. They work the same way as offices do, people move from houses to farms and back. I've had a few problems with the current road system. There are simply way too many roads, and often you end up in a situation when you are unable to build a road to a specific tile. I've come up with a simple solution to this, a tile only needs a road in the same tile or in one of the neighboring tiles. This way there are way less roads and the city looks much more like an actual city and less like a failed infrastructure experiment. Then I worked on the visuals again. I added animated windmills, randomized the farm colors, improved house models, added some trees between the houses and made the house windows glow at night. As usual, I still wasn't satisfied with the player's score mechanic. It felt artificial and simply weird. I wanted the player to feel some connection to the city, to make it more lively and believable. To achieve this, I replaced the random car spawning mechanic with a new one. Now the cars are actually connected to virtual people, and each car actually moves a citizen from home to work and back. Each citizen has a specific tile they live in and another tile where they work at. This way the traffic flow is way less random and much more understandable and predictable. I removed the average speed factor, and the new player score is simply how many people have traveled from home to work and back until the beginning of the next day. Happy with the new mechanic for now, I decided to work a bit more on the visuals. I extended the water plane to infinity, which was quite tricky, then I added simple dynamic clouds that get reflected in water. It was roughly at this point that I gave the game to my friend for some early playtesting, and he actually enjoyed it a lot. However, he had really hard time distinguishing the tiles, so I implemented a mode which highlights the tile borders. I wasn't happy with how the sky looks, it's too washed out for my taste. The problem is that I cannot simply change its color, because it uses actual physical properties of the interaction between sunlight and the atmosphere to compute this color. Instead, I decided to replace the Reinhardt tone mapping operator I'm using with a different one. I tested a bunch of options and decided to use the Uncharted 2 tone mapping. It feels like having the right balance between being vibrant and saturated and not being too dramatic at the same time. Unfortunately, changing the tone mapping operator means that all the assets in the game will look different now, so I had to painfully go through all of them and tweak their colors until the final image looked good. So my advice is to never do that. It is best to design on tone mapping early in the development and just stick to it until the project is finished. Then I improved the visual appearance of the office buildings and added a new factory district type. I think they look especially cool at night. In my new car spawning mechanic, people move from home to work in the morning and then they move back in the evening, making the middle of the day a bit empty and dull. To fix that, I added a new vehicle type, a truck which moves between different work tiles during the day. I'm still thinking on the exact mechanics of these trucks though. Then I added a birch tree to make the forests look a bit more interesting. Speaking of the forests, there was a slight problem. When building a road through it, it is really hard to see the road underneath the trees. So I made the trees tilt a little bit while you are placing the road, which solves the issue and also looks really cute. There was something wrong about the car's movement that took me quite long to realize. The car's speed should depend on the road slope. I implemented that and the cars immediately started looking much more believable. And that's all I have for now. I'm extremely happy with this project. It's starting to look great, I can clearly see where it's heading and I feel like I can actually release it on schedule. If you're still watching, you probably should wishlist the game on Steam, this increases the chances of it being released even more. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next devlog.
बाय बाय